The problem on this uh, of revolution of the moon, which has uh, given some concern to mission control, and for which they're breathlessly awaiting acquisition of signal uh, in another four minutes, uh, began with the inability to depressurize that docking tunnel between the command module and the lunar module, and perhaps Nelson Benton and Scott McLeod out at Grumman uh, Aircraft and Beth Page Long Island could tell us what that problem was. Uh, Walter, the problem apparently uh, started with uh, way back when uh, the vehicles first docked. It's a matter of, of mylar to some extent, and so that uh, we can show you a little better what mylar is, we've got some, uh, some along with us. Scott, can you go through the, the problem as well as you can as to what actually happened, what we think happened? Well, this is the mylar that we will be speaking about, Walter. Uh, if you can hang on to this, I can probably give everybody an idea as to what did happen. Some mylar was lost from one of the hatches, and this mylar lodged in the valve, and therefore the tunnel between the command module and the lunar module that this hatch leads to here could not be depressurized. In order to free this and check the integrity of the tunnel and of the two hatches, the command module hatch, and the lunar module hatch, what the crew did was they opened the valve here and then opened the valve on the egress hatch that's down below. This permitted the air to depressurize from the lunar module down a considerable amount. Then they closed the valve on the top and in here, repressurized the lunar module, and this gave them a pressure differential or a lower pressure in the tunnel than they had in either the command module or the lunar module. They then checked the pressure across the two hatches and found out that both held their pressure and therefore this gave them the integrity check they were looking for. It should be pointed out that the astronauts themselves are in uh, no danger here. Uh, physical danger, it's the mission and uh, the, what they're planning to do that is in danger if they cannot uh, undock as planned. Now that undocking is supposed to have taken place just one minute ago and we can show you uh, what uh, it uh, looked like if it went off on schedule. That is, if they had not uh, gotten up to that uh, six degree uh, differenti uh, differential between the uh, spacecraft uh, and the lunar module. They uh, in uh, separating the spacecraft, they, uh, the command module moved back a bit and away. They let the, uh, let the probe go and separate in this fashion. Now they drift apart there to 40 feet and hold that position 40 feet apart while John Young in the command module gets this look of the lunar module and inspects it. He also takes pictures of it for the record and for study on the ground. Get a good look at it, see that it seems to be in good shape. And it should be in this position that they should be coming around the moon just about now. In about 45 seconds from now uh, is the scheduled time for the acquisition of signal. When they come around the moon and they confirm that they have undocked, they will then be prepared to show us some television pictures according to their schedule of the, from the command module of the lunar module. The only television cameras, uh, the, the uh, color camera, the Westinghouse camera that uh, we have seen such beautiful pictures from and a standby RCA black and white camera are in the command module. The lunar module does not have uh, cameras. So we will not see that uh, sweep by television uh, down to that dangerous terrain of the moon to within 10 miles of it, uh, which comes just a little later this afternoon. They make that descent uh, at 4.35 Eastern Daylight Time this afternoon, an hour and 20 uh, minutes from now, if all goes well. Now we should be hearing acquisition uh, of the spacecraft from Mission Control shortly. We are, of course, uh, plugged into mission control and waiting for that word. Mission control by its telemetry 
Uh, we'll get an indication right away as to whether the spacecraft have separated. And then they will get, to shortly after that, voice communication with the spacecraft. That's been the uh, normal routine on the circle of the moon. As they come around the moon, they're getting their first glimpse again of that uh, unusual sight, which might be called Earth rise. It is the Earth coming up over the horizon. They're at 69 miles high in that uh, nearly circular orbit. First yesterday, uh, the first reports were that they were in a perfectly circular orbit, uh, then everything had fired exactly, but it turned out that the orbit is just a little bit elliptical, just a little bit off the circle, but not enough to affect the flight. Their only other problem is that they are running 12 minutes behind their schedule. That, uh, that is of the flight schedule, the events of the flight, uh, because they did not make three mid-course corrections, which had been program they were not needed such Madrid has acquisition now we'll uh, wait for a good lockup see whether he uh, comes uh, into acquisition with the television camera on or not this is Jack Riley voice of mission control Madrid has acquisition that's Madrid is one of the three big ground stations with their 85 foot in diameter antenna dishes each of those Play strategically around the Earth. And yeah, we got him right away, Tom. Hello, Snoop. How you doing? Snoopy, of course, is the <laughs> lunar module. Hi, right, Snoop on high again. How are you reading us? Bye bye. I mean. All right, reading you loud and clear. We're about uh, 30 or 40 feet away from them. The station keep us for about five, ten minutes here. They separated. Uh, could you give us uh, poo and uh, data? We got a load for you, and you're ready to copy some pads. They have separated. You're hearing John Young from the command module. So you've got them 30 or 40 uh, feet away from him. Just where they're supposed to be. Separation took place. Those were some long minutes, mission control. And I'm ready to copy. Roger, Gino, it's uh, DOIs, first pad, and we got three pads for you, starting with DOI. I'll read them all through, through all of them, and then you can read me back, okay? Okay, it's uh, DOI, zero, niner, right, zero, niner, niner, four, six, zero, zero. These are the times niner. for the next maneuvers, and they're niner, getting those cleared away zero, before zero, they go to this television. Niner, niner. They're giving the time for DOI. That's the descent orbit insertion. And that time of 99 hours, 46 minutes, and 2 seconds translates into 4.35 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. While they're going through these checks, CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 10 will continue in a moment.